Hello, this is the video companion piece to the manuscript Googling your hand hygiene data using Google Forms, Google Sheets, and R to collect and automate analysis of hand hygiene compliance monitoring. So what I'm going to do is take you through a quick walkthrough about how to set up your Google Form and your sheet and use the automated analysis tool. So the first thing you're going to need to do is create a Google account if you don't already have a Google account. They are free to set up and you shouldn't have any problems uh, getting going. So once you have your account set up, go ahead and log in and go to docs.google.com slash forms. You're going to see this if you don't have any Google Forms created yet. What we're going to do first is create a new blank form. So click this white spot up here with the purple plus, and you can see it's created a blank form for us. First thing we're going to do is name the form, and you can call it whatever you want. I suggest hand hygiene. Uh, once your form is named you'll notice that it will start saving it automatically and when you click this area up here it will automatically rename your form. So the next thing we need to do is add in our variables. Now again as the manuscript suggests you need to add all of these particular variables in exactly as I will add them in now. That includes capitalization and punctuation otherwise the analysis tool will not work as expected. So the first question is date. So this is capital D. And although when you enter in data here, Google will automatically create a time and date stamp. And what that's going to do is put in the exact time and date that the data were entered in. Now, for example, if individuals choose to collect data on a paper form and enter them in later, that timestamp will be the date and the time that they actually entered the, in the data as opposed to the date and the time of the observation. So that is why I chose to add date and time fields into this particular form. So once you do that, it will automatically select the date validator here, which allows you to put in the month, day, and the year. And your date field should be automatically set up. Here you can add a, if you want this to be required or not. So can people skip this question or not? Go ahead and click that. Um, I don't like to have questions skippable. Click that plus to add the next question. This will be time. And as you can see, this drop down menu will automatically default to the time validator. The next thing we want to do is add one more question here. This is going to be location, capital L. And again, location is going to be any place that you're going to be observing hand hygiene compliance monitoring. We're going to change this validator here to a drop down. Now you can change this to multiple choice if you want. Check boxes. I prefer drop down because it does, makes the form a little bit cleaner to look at. So I'm going to select drop down. And then you'll notice that there's option one, add option, etc. Now again, you can add in any location that you choose. And it's not going to matter for the particular an analysis tool or the form itself. So let's make up some stuff. SICU maybe, and then we click down here at add option, MICU, and then let's add something else. Ward 1. So once you're done with that, just click the plus to add the next question. This is going to be individual type. Again, that's capital I and individual, lowercase t on type. The idea behind this is also to do a drop-down menu. And what we want to do is add in any particular individual who we might be observing. So for example, we might monitor nurses, physicians, maybe we look at medical residents, maybe we look at fellows, and maybe there's another category. All done. Click the plus, add the next one. The next one is going to be moment with capital M. And the idea behind this was, again, to monitor the five moments of hand hygiene according to the World Health Organization. But as long as this is named moment with a capital M, you can really put whatever options you choose down here. If you only monitor one moment, two moments, if you only do before entering the room and after exiting the room, that's all fine. Just as long as the variable is called moment, any options will be fine, as you will see later. So we can add in our moments here for touching patient, etc. I'm not going to add them in right now. And I'm going to change this to a drop down as well. Okay, one more question, and that one is going to be compliant. 
with a question mark at the end, capital C. And this is going to be a multiple choice, and we're just going to make this a yes-no question. So uh, Google actually will often suggest a yes-no. So we're going to go ahead and click yes-no, yes and no, and it will automatically input those there. Otherwise, you can just type in yes and no, ideally in that particular order. So now we're done with our form. And the great thing is now you can click send up here at the top, and that will give you uh, the opportunity to email people, or you can click the link, give them this link, and your hand hygiene tool will be ready to use your form. So once your form is completed and people are entering in data, data will automatically be saved into uh, your Google account. If you go back into your form, you can see we were in questions here at the top. You can also click responses. And you can see here that we are currently accepting responses here. You can turn this off by clicking it to stop anyone from entering in data to the particular form. This green button here is what allows you to link your hand hygiene form into a Google spreadsheet. And this is a critical aspect of the tool. So by clicking that, we get this. And we're going to create a new spreadsheet and just click Create. And what that's going to do is then create a spreadsheet that's linked to your form. Any data that are entered into the form will then be entered automatically into the spreadsheet. You can view those by going to docs.google.com slash spreadsheets. And when I go there, I can see that automatically hand hygiene responses is linked in. So once data are entered in, they may look something like this. And this, again, as I mentioned, this is a timestamp that has the date and the time that the data were entered in. And here's the date variable that we included of the observation, the time of the observation, the location, the individual type at the moment, and whether or not the observation was compliant. So once this is complete, click the Share button here on your sheet and get Shareable Link. And that will copy this particular link to your clipboard. And now it's time for data analysis. By going to the website https colon slash slash crsp.louisville.edu slash shiny slash hand hygiene, you will have access to the hand hygiene monitoring tool. That link that you just copied in, paste that into the Google Sheets URL box and click Get Data. This is going to link the system to your Google spreadsheet and pull in the data for analysis. And you can see that it's automatically going to create your statistical process control P chart. If observations are identified as special cause variation, they will be marked as red. The rules are noted below. You can click here to learn some more about statistical process control. It's automatically going to use all of the data and it's going to create a rolling month with the numerator, denominator, and the percent compliance that it uh, observed. It's also going to aggregate those into annual uh, amounts, the percent by year. And it's going to calculate a p-value to tell you the statistical difference between those two years. Again, if you have more than two years, you'll see more annual data and more p-values down here. You can also subset the data if you desire. So by default, it is all of the data. You can click whatever month or year that you want and it will default to the first of that particular month again because we're aggregating things monthly and you can see that it's automatically going to recreate the chart and the tables based on the data that were included. You can also subset by location. By default these are marked as all so anything that you included in the location or the profession, again the individual type, or the moment will be available for subsetting and it will automatically recreate the charts on the fly. If you choose to change the y-axis, you can. And you see we'll automatically change that. If you have a benchmark, for example, you always want to be above 90% or say it's 95%, you can type that in and a purple line will show up on the chart. To save these charts, you can right-click them and save the images. You can also take screenshots without an, any issue. 